Alright, that's what I mean when I come up here with her right away. So, hey, good. We are also a church. We love the work. <laughs> I love you guys. chapter 6 this morning, guys, and so uh, if you could turn with me in your word to Matthew chapter 6 this morning. Uh, last week we had an awesome opportunity to look at the word and to be challenged by the words of Jesus again, to hear him say, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Amen. And uh, I confessed my struggle that sometimes I allow myself to focus on perfection and it creates in me a fear that I won't be accepted. Sometimes I have, uh, sorry, sorry, yeah, it creates in me a desire to be accepted, so I try my hardest at something, try to make myself perfect, and I fail. And then other times, uh, my desire to be perfect causes me to have fear, and, and then I end up not doing something, and I over-focus on something else. But the beautiful thing about this passage is that uh, we shared last week that it is and it isn't a command to be perfect. Why? Because Jesus only could fulfill perfectly the commands and the laws of God. And thanks be to God that Jesus lived not only a perfect life for me, he lived it for you. And now as we walk, our walk with Jesus is a walk of faith, right? Believing on his perfect work. And so creating in us a freedom to live our life, to live after Jesus imperfectly as we try to obtain more and more his glory, His perfection. So I hope last week that was encouraging you, that it gave you some freedom, that it we're able to live imperfectly. God knew that we were imperfect, and that's exactly why He sent Jesus, so that our imperfections would be covered by His great righteousness. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to look at... Uh, Another maybe paradox in the scripture, another uh, scripture that we we find in the same um, passage, uh, sorry, the same Sermon on the Mount that Jesus speaks one thing earlier, he spoke something a little different. We're going to reconcile these things together, and I believe it will again create in us this freedom to be followers of Jesus, to live his kingdom, to be doers of his words, and not just hearers of his word. Anybody like doing things? I like doing things. One of the hardest things is watching movies. I just, I sit through, halfway through the movie, I'm like, man, I could be doing something right now. <laughs> but as people of God, uh, we should be people who are doers. Get things done. Accomplish things. Do good. We should be do-gooders. People. <laughs> So it makes uh, both statements, and we're going to attempt this morning to look at these so that we can be obedient to both. Both what he says here in Matthew chapter 6, and also what he says throughout the whole Sermon on the Mount. So let's read here first Matthew chapter 6. We're going to read verse 1 through 4 this morning. And this is what it says. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have received no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. 
Let's pray this morning. Father, I am so grateful for the opportunity that we have to receive from you through your word that is alive and active and breathing. Father, I pray that we would receive all truth from you. And Lord, I pray that your grace would be upon us, that we may be obedient to the things that you are asking of us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as I look at Matthew chapter 6, starting there in verse 1, beware of practicing your righteousness before other people. I was reminded of an earlier encouragement of Christ. What was it that Jesus started off uh, Matthew chapter 5 with? He started the Sermon on the Mount with the Beatitudes, talking about who we are, that it is blessed to be somebody that is poor of spirit and empty of himself. It's blessed to be a peacemaker. It's blessed uh, even when we are cursed, right? We're a blessed people. But then in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, it says this. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So we see this original command, and now we see this, this paradox now comes to a little focus. So we have, on one hand, Jesus instructs us, do good works and make sure people see you, because when they see you doing good things, what? It will result in God receiving glory. Paradox comes in. To, to mind now, because now in Matthew chapter 6, he says, Beware of practicing your good works, your righteousness, in front of other people. How do I know? How am I convinced this morning as I opened up that we should be good doers? We should be doing good all the time. We should be ones as followers of Jesus to, to go out and to, to be doers of his word. Because this is a repeated thing over and over again. First Peter chapter 2, verse 12, right? It says this. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles, among those who do not believe in Jesus, among those in this context who weren't Jewish, but for, uh, keep your conduct among the the world, among the neighbors, among your co-workers, honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good doing yes. and glorify God on the day of his visitation. As followers of Jesus, we must show our good deeds. I'm excited about the things that we have planned as a church to begin to do good in our communities because I know this is going to be a command following after Jesus, that we have to be a people who are doing good. And it doesn't just mean doing good privately, having great families, having great jobs, having good manners at the kitchen table because you didn't put your arm, your elbows on the table. Anybody have that? that we're on the holidays. That thing's coming up a little bit more. Denver kind of reminds who had guests in the house and people were putting elbows on the table. He said, Dad, Dad, they're doing good. It's not just doing good in private. It's, it is not what God said. It's not just about having a beautiful family. It's not just about this thing. No, it's about doing good so that others may see. How do I know this? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We were made to do good. We're made. This is, this is what we were created for. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, what? For good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we shall walk in them. But we were, there is things in the world around us that God has set up for us to be the answer to. 
for us to solve the problem for. There is good things, there is good ways that we're supposed to interact with neighbors, as we talked about a couple weeks ago, interact with our enemies even, right? Providing for them on practical levels, right? These are, these are good things that have been prepared for us beforehand. <laughs> So you, so you're thinking, all right, Andrew, what, what, what do I have to do? Do I have, have to come up and create something and, and I'll look for things to do around me? What I believe we should be doing as believers, as ones that are full of the Holy Spirit, if this is something that God has done, God has prepared these things, God has worked. If, if you notice Ephesians 2, it's all God doing. God has created us. God has made us this through Jesus Christ, set us up for good works. God has prepared beforehand. So our responsibility as believers is asking God, God, what do you have for me to do? If he's already prepared these good things for us to walk in and for us to do, then it's not, oh, what do I have to do? I have to like work at this, oh, I've got to create this, oh, I've got to do this all myself. No, I said, God, what is it around me that you have called me to? What is it that you have called me to do good in? And all of it so that he can receive glory. James 1, verse 22. We are to be doers, not just hearers, right? James 1, 22. But be you doers of the word and not hearers only. Because when we're only hearers of the Word of God, what does it say about us? You guys can read it, so I don't have to say it. No. We fool ourselves. If we're, one, if we're only ones that, that hear the Word of God, if we're only ones that, that, that receive it, memorize it, right? No, that's not the whole picture, though. The whole picture is we should be doers of the word. We are expected to be good doers. I know this. Look at Matthew chapter 25. Here. Matthew chapter 25. Let's look at uh, verse 30. For here for a moment. Right. And if you're familiar a little bit with Matthew chapter 25, he's, he's talking here, final judgment, there's an end to come, there's a time, and we, we know this as believers, where we'll stand before God, and when we stand before God, He will judge us, right? Our, our, our righteousness, he will, he will judge whether we're with him or for him or against him. And, and this is the recording of Jesus' words of, of what this day will look like, right? So let's look here. Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. It says this, Then the king will say to those on his right, his right hand are, are usually those that are with him, those who are blessed, those who have received him, those who have lived by faith, right? So the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did you see the when did we see the hungry and feed you or the thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you in or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visiting you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers. You did it to me. What is a mark of a follower of Jesus? What is a mark of a disciple? It is one who is not only a hearer of the word, not only one who 
memorizes the word, but one who goes and does. And here in Matthew chapter 25, we see those that go and do are ones that do it not just to those who are around us, but to Jesus himself. It's our high purpose as a follower of Jesus, as a disciple of Christ, to let our light shine before men. It's not only good enough to know the Word of God and to receive the Word of God for ourselves. He has done these things for us so that we can show others who He is and what He's like. So that they may, what does it say in Matthew chapter 5 verse 16? That they may see the good works that we do. Not so that we can get attention. We're going to get to Matthew chapter 6, right? Not so that we can get attention, but that they could see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Amen. So in Matthew chapter 6, let's turn there. Let's see this other side of the coin. I hope this morning that we are convinced that we are to be lights. We are to be doers of good. So in Matthew chapter 6, why is Jesus emphasizing here a caution, a beware, a almost hiddenness of our good works? If we look through the chapter 6, the first uh, three sections here is about giving, acting, acts of righteousness in giving to those who are in need, acts of righteousness in prayer, and acts of righteousness in fasting. Without a doubt, we're going to get into these good works, uh, and we'll continue the series. Next week, we have the Osbournes coming. They're missionaries to the Ukraine, and so they're going to be ministering. The following week, uh, we're going to focus on Jesus and his birth, but we're going to pick this back up uh, and talk about these three areas of, of acting our righteousness or performing our righteousness by giving, by prayer, and by fasting, because these are essential to the, to, the, to the walk of a believer. But here, right before introducing these three important aspects of a believer's life, Jesus gives a caution. Beware. Why? Because we were... As we've been walking through the Sermon on the Mount, this whole way Jesus has been taking the laws or commands or regular functions of the religious people of the day, and he was going a step further, and they were examining their heart. So here we see Jesus again making a statement that on the surface, people could be accomplishing these things, we could be do-gooders, we could be doing all the things right, we could be praying and fasting and giving, and, and to, the, to the surface, everybody says, oh, what a good Christian. But Jesus here, again, takes this moment and allows us and says, wait a minute, check your heart. Check your motives. What is the why behind your do-gooding? <clears throat> thinking as I was preparing this, I was, I was thinking about all the different things that we could do, all the things that we don't do. I said, man, there's, there's so much more for us, I believe, there's so much more for us to do for the kingdom of God in Madison. 100%. Yes, there are things that God has prepared specifically for each one of us in the church individually and as a church as a whole. There are things that God has prepared for us to do. But I love that Jesus gave us this message because I don't want to be found somebody that just has done good work, but I've never know Jesus. I've never had the right motive. I've never done it, or we've never done it for God's glory. See, if anything, that's the warning that follows in Matthew chapter 25. 
who he read the first part of the verse, those who are on the right, he said to them, hey, you did all these things, and you did them unto me, and, and it kind of looks like they were shocked. They didn't even know. They were like, hey, in some way they are saying, hey, we were just being obedient. We were just doing these good things which you prepared for us. Now the other side of the coin in that moment also, verse 41, let's read, sorry, let's go back, Matthew chapter 25, let's read the other side of this, Matthew chapter 25, 41 through 46. This is the, the danger, this is the caution, right, of just being people who do good without knowing out the right motive. So Matthew chapter 25 verse 41. There's that one. It says this. Then he will say to those on the left, depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me naked and you did not clothe me sick and in prison and you did not visit me, then they will also, then they also will answer him, Lord, we, did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them saying, truly I say, as did not do it to the one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Be careful that we be doers. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. We can be doing the same thing. We can both be feeding the poor. We can both be uh, giving to the poor. We can both be praying. We can both be fasting. We can... We could, we, there would be two people that are, uh, that are uh, doing good and, and caring for the needy and, and giving drink and, and clothing the naked and, and visiting the prison and, and visiting those who are sick. And one could be in sin and one could be in righteousness. Sin sometimes doesn't always look like evil. Sin can be subtle. And this is where Jesus is beginning to show us the difference between the wheat that is growing and the wheat, right? The difference between those that have the righteous heart, the heart of God, and those who do not. Our hearts must be set on the Father and His glory, and not set on the praises of man. We cannot be do-gooders just so that we can get the next accolade. Not just so that we can get the praises of man. Not just so people will notice who we are. Because if we do it to be seen by man, we will be seen by man. And if I'm honest, sometimes that feels good. I do something nice to somebody, or I do something good, I meet somebody's need, and, and they thank me, and they love me. And they sing my praises. Uh, have you met that really nice guy, that, that family that lives in that apartment down there? Like, and so then it motivates me a little bit more. Okay, I can do, I can offer one more good thing to them. You know, I'll, I'll do one more good thing for them because I kind of I like being liked. Have we said that a few times already? I, I kind of enjoy it. But here Jesus gets that, 
the motive behind, the heart behind our doing good. What is it? Not that others would notice who we are, because if we're seen by men, we'll be, we'll be seen by men, and we'll get that reward. But here, there's a promise that there's going to be a reward, right? So that's why I read all the way to verse 4, even though we're not giving, uh, we're not going to be talking specifically about giving this morning, but in verse 4 it says this, so that giving may be in secret, this is the promise here, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Verse 1 says it in this way that there'll be no reward. If we do this for men, there'll be no reward. Well, if there's no reward if we're doing it for men, then there must be a reward that we're missing out on. Now, I'm not saying we're going to, you know, do all the good, and then all the good is going to happen to me now in this life. Right? That's not the, that's not the, that's not the overall truth of Scripture. If you give the church a million dollars, it doesn't mean you're going to receive a Mercedes Benz. Like that, it doesn't work that way in the kingdom of God. Oh, no. Ah! <laughs> Do these good things in secret, and your Father will see them, and He will have a reward. He promises those who give up, whatever you give up on earth for my sake, right in heaven, will receive a hundredfold. I don't know what heaven's going to be like. I can only imagine. It's going to be a time of some big celebration. For those who do things for, for man? No. For those who say, my heart is fixed on you, God, for your glory, Father, and yours alone, I'm going to be a doer of your word. I'm going to meet the need. I'm going to ask you, Father, what is it that you have prepared for me? I'm going to be going about the Father's business. If anything, that sounds a lot like what Jesus was doing. And as I go around doing these things, I'm doing it for you, not for myself. And you know what? The, the truth from 2 Peter is that, that people will see the things that we do, and, and we may receive some praise. It's, it's a good thing. When people notice that we are people who are full of love and full of compassion, who are full of grace, who are doing good things, they will see it. They will enjoy it. But our opportunity in that moment is to point to the one who has motivated us to do such good things. We do it unto God, and God sees it all, and there is a reward for us, but our do-gooding is in response to His great good work for us. Jesus emphasized the Father in these passages. I counted at least seven times from Matthew 16 to, to, to the end of uh, Matthew 6. There's, sorry, seven times where Jesus over and over again says the Father. It's for the Father. It's under the Father. It's motivated by the Father. It's to the Father. Jesus only did what he saw the Father do. And if we examine the life of Christ, we say, all right, I can see it. there was a lot of good works that Jesus was accomplishing for the glory of his Father. So that all would know what his Father is like. And the question for us to be asking is, hey, does my life bring glory to the Father? Is there a way, other ways that I can be doing good for others around me to be obedient to who Christ is. James 1.22, don't just be hearers of the word. Do the word. So how do we do works to God and not for man? We have to be people that are 
humbling under his hand, saying, Father, what is it that you have prepared for me? What is it that you have done? If he has created us, so, so I love that passage, right? He has created us, Ephesians chapter 2, all right, let me look at it. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we shall walk in them. So he's created us. He worked us together with our personality, our desires, our giftedness, who we are. He created us, and he said, well, you know what, I have something specially planned for you. Then I'm going to be asking God, God, what is it that you have planned? What is it about your kingdom? What is it in this world that you have planned just for me to accomplish so that others may see what you're like? As a church, I was said I had a couple conversations this week. Been able to talk about uh, our, our diversity and in celebrating who we are as a church and our multicultural ethnic thing and, and how we, we celebrate those things. I'm like, man, there's there's aspects in each one of who we are that show exactly who God is. And as we come together, it's beautiful because we can all see the glory of God just by being us, who God created us to be. Yeah. Looking down on ourselves about who we are. No, God has created us special so that we may show His glory. Now, how do we do this? How do we accomplish this? Ask the Father, Father, what is it that you have for me? And if these scriptures are true, which I think you guys agree with me that they are, there's going to be something very specific in a way that you're going to be able to meet other people's needs, do good in our community, do good amongst the people, the, the, what the scripture said, amongst the Gentiles, that they could see God. And on his day of visitation, instead of being, oh my, instead of being ashamed, instead of being in fear, no, on the day of Jesus' visitation, on the day that he returns, they're going to glorify the Father. That means that by our doing good, people are going to come to Christ. That's, that's what that's what the scripture is, is teaching us. By our doing good, by our meeting needs, by our obedience to scripture, people are going to come to Christ because on the day of vegetation, instead of being ashamed, they're going to give glory to the one who is coming for them. That's good news. Again, that emphasizes that 2 Corinthians chapter 5, right? That God is reconciling the world to himself, and what? We are a part of his great plan, his great purpose. So what can we do? What can we, what can, what can we start with? And I'll just I'll give a, a practical step. It's, it's Christmas season, right? If, if, and we, there's Christmas all around. What are some needs that you can meet? And don't just think about it in the way of, okay, I want to meet this need again. I gotta be careful. God, I gotta guard my heart. I'm not just doing this so that they recognize me. No, I'm doing this because God has met all of my needs. Some of us need to be convinced of that. God has met all of my needs. <laughs> yeah. right? And so then when we go and meet somebody else, we're not doing it just to, for them to. Read to receive from us, we're doing it as a response of, God has met all my needs, and so I'm going to meet all the needs around me. This is the gospel. This is the good news. This is how we live this out. This is how we walk this out. Right? We, everything we do, it comes from what? Who God is, and what He's done for us. And this is why, after encouraging us in Matthew chapter 5, to let people see our good works, to let our light shine forever. Jesus gives this caution. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Jesus is not instructing us to be in private be in closed doors and to be hidden. He is encouraging us to examine our motives and make sure that everything that we do 
and it's done for the glory of the Father. Amen. Amen. Let's pray this morning. Father, I am grateful for the opportunity that I have and that we have to do good works and to show others who you are. Father, I pray for your church this morning that we would be people who do good and people don't see us, but they see you. Father, I pray in this moment that you would help us, Holy Spirit, to examine our hearts. Father, that we may be rightly motivated. Pray this 